In this video, we will continue learning how to handle exceptions in our RESTful web service application. And our next step is to learn how to return a custom JSON representation of an error message. If I go back to my postman, in our previous video, we have returned a JSON representation of our entire error object. If I go back to my Sprint Suite, we have handled an exception class, and then we took entire exception object and we have added this entire exception object to a response entity so that this entire exception is then included into HTTP response body. So now let's learn how to include our own custom error object into a response body. And to do that, we'll need to create our own custom error class. So I will go to my packages and I'm going to create it inside of the response because this is going to be a model class which I will call error object or error message. And because this class is going to be used in a response, which is sent to a calling client, I'll put it into a response package. So I'll create a new class and I will call it error message and click on finish. Now we will need to add properties that we want this error message to contain. For example, I want my error message to contain, uh, let's say, a timestamp. So I'll include a date object and I'll call it timestamp. And then I want my error object to contain, let's say, a, a message. So I will add uh, a new class property and I'll call it message. Okay, so uh, let's leave this too for the purpose of simplicity. In your case, uh, please go ahead and add everything else that you need. I will import date from Java Util and I will create getters and setters. I'll go to source and then generate getters and setters for this class. Message timestamp, click on OK. And I will also format my source code like this. So my error message model class is ready. I will now use it. So I'll go back to my uh, app exceptions handler and here now, instead of returning an exception, I will return my custom error class. I'll create an instance of it, error message equals new error message. Let me actually go and add a constructor to this as well. So I will add one no arcs constructor, error message, and I will add one more constructor that takes in timestamp and a message like this. So now I can go back to my app exception handler and I can create an error message. Let me import it first. I will give it new date as a timestamp and I will give it an error message, which I'm going to take from the exception. So I'll get a localized description of it. Let's import date from Java Util. And now I'll take this error message and I will add it to my response entity as a body of HTTP response like this. So now this error message will be converted by the framework into either JSON representation or XML representation, depending on the accept header, which is included in HTTP request. Now the localized message can be null. So you might want to check for null here. And if it's null, you can include another message. Let's say, for example, string uh, error message equals localized message. And then you can check if um, error message is equal to null, then your error message will be equal to exception to string, something like this. Let's say description like this. And then we will use error message description in a constructor to create an instance of the error message here like this. Okay, so let's run this now and see how it looks. I will run my application. My application should be started by now. Yes. And I'll go to postman. And now I will repeat this HTTP get request. And instead of receiving JSON representation of entire error object, I should get back a JSON representation of the error object I have created. So let's send this HTTP GET request. And here we go. We got back a JSON representation, 
with two fields that we have created in the error message class. So if I go back to my error message, these are the two timestamp and message. And I see the message description is null pointer exception and we have a current timestamp. So it's working. Now let's continue and learn how to handle other types of exceptions other than this general exception class. In this particular case, our application generates null pointer exception. So let's catch null pointer exception. 